This is Samuel, one of my younger students. And in February, he pretty much challenged me to a coding battle. Now, obviously, a professional like me has better things to do and would never... Why? Okay, so we decided to do it for bragging rights. If he wins, he gets this diploma. And if he loses, he gets this other diploma. And I get to make this video. Win-win, I suppose. So during the next month, we made a plan how this thing will go and agreed to spend two days on the projects and to have them judged in six categories. We asked around for ideas and came up with a few of them ourselves. And on this fateful day, me and Samuel met on Discord, rolled the dice and got a... Seven. <laughs> seven? What, what was seven? It was uh, your personal programmable avatars. And then the fun part. Because Samuel is much younger than me, I thought I'd give myself a handicap and not use the internet. I'm just going to try to code this using what I remember about coding in JavaScript. But still, a challenge is a challenge, so I didn't hold anything back. I began with basic HTML, added a canvas element, set it to a fixed size in JavaScript, and gave it a border in CSS. Then I took a drawing I made years ago and decided to use it as a reference. I called the draw image method and nothing happened. I literally spent 10 minutes trying to figure out what was wrong before realizing ah, the image is not loaded. Great start. I wrote some helper code so I click on the canvas and the coordinates pop up in the console. With those coordinates I started drawing lines and curves to make the head. But then I realized this avatar has some symmetry, so I took advantage of that and normalized the space with 0, 0 in the center screen and remapped the values I had previously. Then it was quite easy to get the basic outline of the model. I added a control point for where the avatar is looking at and a slider to move this point horizontally within a range. I then used the quadratic Bezier curve for the vertical line of the head. I then did the same thing for the other axis. I then added two more control points, one for the top of the head and another for the chin. Little did I know I was complicating myself so much that I would eventually remove these after some time. Anyway, I connected these to the sliders as well and experimented with their ranges so the model appears 3D. I started working on the eyes. Just the right eye actually, because the left will be symmetric. So I got the basic shape down and I thought it was cool that when rotating they kind of looked like glasses. But it wasn't what I was going for, so I used the scale method of the canvas context to squish the shape slightly as the head rotates, to give the impression they wrap around a 3D shape. I was happy with it, so I started using fills and colors to finalize the eyes, pretty much. I moved to drawing the beard in the same way, focusing on half the face. I had to be careful so that when rotating the head to the side, more of the beard becomes visible and wraps around the head. I made the nose real quick. It was okay, but I really wanted to make it better. I wrote a to-do comment to take care of that later because I started to worry I won't have enough time to finish this at a satisfactory level. For the hair, I planned a really cool thing to make it more interesting using physics, but I decided to leave it for the following day. Now I was getting tired and couldn't focus on something so difficult. So I just made the black shape cover the top of the head and moved on to stylize the neck, the body and the clothes. It's just clicking the screen to get coordinates, drawing lines and shapes with different colors and some slight squishing to give the impression that the body turns slightly to the side as the head moves. Skewing would have been better but I didn't know how to do it without looking it up. I added also some years. I wanted to make them hide behind the head as it turns, but then decided not to bother with it. It was too difficult, so I restricted the movement and thought I will cover them with the hair the next day. I somehow had a bit of energy left and decided to add camera support before calling it a day. I initialized the camera and began basic image processing, where I get the center of mass of all the blue pixel locations. I would then use this to move the head instead of using the sliders. The room I was in didn't have good lighting, so it was challenging to test. But I would move to another room the next day and I wasn't worried. The light is better in that one. 
I also thought I'd make a system to detect multiple markers to control not just the head rotation but also the shape of the mouth to do a real-time lip syncing. Basically I made my next day really really hard. Next day I woke up early and started planning things while walking to work. In short, I decided to refactor the code, do the hair physics, the real-time face tracking, and record the video of me to demo the thing because I thought no judge is going to put markers on their face to test this. I refactored using object-oriented principles, separated the code into files, and made it portable so it can be included in other projects. Doing this early in the morning was great because I relearned what I did the previous day and figured out some things like that the B and C control points are unnecessary. Focusing on just point A made the code simpler and easier to work with. I moved on to the physics. For that, I first wrote utility functions for vector operations like simple addition, subtraction, scaling and normalization, and then implemented a particle system with gravity as the only force affecting them. I then used Verlet integration and imposed constraints between the particles, making some of them static and eventually glued to the character. I essentially implemented some pendulums. I put two of them to act as the strings coming from the shirt, and then moved on to make the front hair as a set of pendulums hanging relative to point A. I didn't like how they move, so I changed them into double pendulums instead, and did the same thing for the back hair as well. I knew styling the hair won't cause me any problems, so I moved to the other tricky part, controlling the mouth. First I added two sliders to control how much it stretches horizontally and vertically, and adjusted the vertices defining those shapes to consider these as well. I thought drawing an actual mouth would make the effect look even better, but I thought it's too much trouble and stuck to using negative space. I made some blue markers out of tape, which I colored blue on one side. I started with one on my chest and another on the nose to control how the head will move relative to the body. Great. I really hope I win this. I also added a calibrate button that should be pressed when the user is standing straight so I can get relative values when moving the head. The system worked well despite the markers being too shiny and the light in the room caused them to look white in some situations. Got quite excited so I started covering my face with the markers. Putting them on was easy, using the beard, but taking them off later was a different story. Let's just say I had a premature shave, so to speak. Added three more markers, one on the bottom, which tells how much the mouth opens vertically, and two on the sides to control how wide the mouth is. They're key to make the mouth move naturally. Otherwise it ends up being like the talking pumpkin I made a while ago. So I had to identify these points somehow, and I used a technique where after isolating the blue pixels, I first take the farthest ones. Then I take the point that is farthest from both these other points. Then the point that is farthest from all three of these points. And finally the point with the minimum distance to all others like this. This worked, but it was fidgeting quite a bit. So I partitioned the pixels around these five points and updated them to be the average location instead. This solved the fidgeting problem. I recorded the video to be used as an input if someone doesn't have a camera or willingness to put on markers on their face. I made a drop down for the input. It has the video, the sliders and the camera. And I had to start a local server otherwise processing the video wouldn't work due to course. I styled the front hair by using curves where control points came from adjacent pendulums and played around with the number of pendulums to get both the front and back hair to look like I wanted. I also added side hair to partially cover the ears, otherwise they looked quite funny. I then styled the strings a little bit and... well... Blah 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 blah. Hello! Is this good? I actually thought I could go a bit longer and try to fix the nose, but I couldn't. I was too tired and I also think I found a bug. So I gave up and just added a few more instructions on the page and that's it. Now this is where Samuel was supposed to make a summary video, the same way I did. 
but he procrastinated a bit, to say the least. He does have a channel, maybe if you'll encourage him, he'll eventually do it. But I don't want to delay this anymore. So, as a compromise, here's me testing his app for the first time. It's an old application, and I couldn't start it at first, but after some fidgeting... What the... this is the... Okay. He, he didn't use libraries. Oh my. <laughs> I thought I was doing him a favor for not using libraries and he didn't use either. This is amazing. This is the penguin he made once for the side scroller variant of the Santa and his penguins, I think. But now it's here and it's talking. <laughs> it's talking uh, according to my microphone. <laughs> so actually he, he, yeah, I think I know what he did. This is quite impressive. I mean, uh, <laughs> I did put a lot of effort into my my thing there. I was really, really worried that he's going to use some kind of, uh, I don't know, 3JS or packages that makes it look really, really impressive. So I, I really didn't hold anything back. But this is amazing that he could do it without, um, without libraries. And, um, oh, oh. I clicked and something happened. Okay. Escape to quit. Wow. Wow, it even changes changes color. And is this the background or or what? Yeah. Okay. Okay, wait, this is becoming a little bit uh, interesting because I can't customize mine in the same way that he can. So, um, I what are the other things? So invert, wow, it's flipping them and it's flipping them no matter what you select there. And now it's um, white on dark background. Wow, this is... Uh, this is something. And what is talk? Escape. I don't know what talk is. Hello? Okay, it, it moved its mouth a little bit. I think it's um, starting the animation to um, to test it somehow if I wouldn't have a microphone connected to my, my computer, but uh, it doesn't matter. So it's very interesting because I also did the same thing in my uh, avatar. I put there this um, video uh, of me talking because I was, I'm pretty sure that uh, People are not going to be patient enough to put markers on their face. What is this rainbow? It's changing the, the colors. How is he doing this? So black to green to something. I don't actually know what he's doing here. He's not just changing the hue, he's changing also the uh, luminosity here. Okay, and if I escape to quit, then this background is changing like that. All right. Can I do the same thing on the... No, I think it's just for the background. Okay. Anyway, um, impressive. Uh, wait, I forgot this. What is this? Caffeinate. Okay. I actually recorded some things today and I have coffee here. So what does this do? Um, nothing. If I press escape. Oh 
don't lie. I think the game is still on. I, I thought in the beginning that this looks very simple, but there are so many features here and uh, art is like simplistic with this kind of uh, pixel graphics, but it's an art style and maybe the judges are gonna like it. Oh my, this is... This is much more impressive than I was expecting. Okay, good job, Samuel. <laughs> With our projects ready, all we needed was a judge. And since this is creative coding, I couldn't think of anyone more suitable than Frank from Frank's Laboratory. If you don't know who that is, you're missing out. He teaches really original things here on YouTube. Let's hear what he had to say. Hi everyone, I'm here to judge these two projects in six categories. Whoever gets the most points wins. Feel free to disagree with me and leave a comment down below, this is my subjective opinion. I think both projects are impressive and both contestants did a great job, but there can only be one winner. Let's have a look. I already played with both projects, I inspected the code, so this is not my first impressions video. We will score in six categories, visuals, number of features, novelty of features, easy to use, creativity and complexity and execution of the idea. Let's dive right into visuals. Samuel did a great job, but I think it's really hard to compete with Radu in terms of visuals. Look at this thing. Looks amazing. Radu, you win this one. Number of features. Radu allows users to use pre-recorded video, webcam and even sliders and we have a debug mode. This is really good. Samuel allows us to change colors, invert them, cycle through colors with this rainbow option, automatically run the animation with talk and caffeinate. <laughs> with all the color variations alone, this one goes to Samuel. Great job. Novelty of features. Both projects use audio input. Samuel draws and animates a character using canvas rectangles. I really like this idea, but Radu even includes a video input. His animation has even things like quadratic curves and physics. As with most Radu's projects, I have never seen anything like this. This round goes to Radu. Easy to use? Samuel's project is controlled by mouse and microphone volume. This project is very user-friendly. Radu gives us pre-recorded testing video and sliders, but to get the most of his project as a user, you need markers on your face. I wasn't prepared and I didn't have the right shade of blue to put on my face, so this is my fault. Maybe some kind of user interface that allows us to choose color shade would be nice. Samuel wins in this category. User experience and project accessibility can be important. Creativity. I was thinking how to score this category and it's really hard to choose. Both of you did a great job and I'm giving both of you one point. I'm the judge, so I can do that. <laughs> Complexity and execution of the idea. I went over both code bases. Code structure is relatively clean and neither of you used the library. I was really impressed by both projects. This point goes to Radu, who went above and beyond. Hair physics, vertical and horizontal head motion connected to a webcam and moving mouth that reacts to volume. It's really not easy to compete with that. The competition was actually really close, so well done, Samuel. And congratulations, Radu, you are the winner. Woohoo! I almost lost to a 14-year-old. <laughs> so why did I do it? Well, I really like doing things like this. For me, it was one of the best things I did all year. I'm weird, I know. But doing things like this can sometimes have unexpected benefits. Like the 12-hour unedited video of me coding it became viral. It was really interesting to see the reaction people had to it, and I was surprised how many people liked it and watched it all the way through. But the main reason I accept it is that Samuel is a talented guy, much more capable than I was at his age. He even helps me teach and finds bugs in my code or ways to do it better. The reason why I took things seriously is that I wanted him to have a proper challenge and see that there are many things still left to learn. I hope he's gonna practice and beat me someday. He said he's gonna post videos now too, and there's already something on his channel, so check him out and see you guys.